Bringing home a new puppy can be one of the most exciting things for you and your family, but it can also be one of the most frustrating things if you're having to deal with things like puppy biting, jumping up, chewing on things, shoes, clothing. All of these things can make raising your puppy really challenging. In today's video, I'm gonna work with this adorable little puppy right here and show you the one tool that'll be the quickest fix for those frustrating puppy behaviors. I'm Instructor Steve, this is Popcorn. Welcome back to McCann Dogs. You know, when you first get your young puppy home, you realize that they never stop. And puppies are amazing for doing things that they want to do all the time. Hi, buddy. Things like running or investigating shoes or chewing on things or even jumping on people. Busy puppies are a challenge. And that frustration can be really mitigated with one simple tool, that idea of a house line. And having a house line attached to them is really a simple way to be able to take control of them in moments and prevent the game from happening. One thing that puppies learn really quickly is that you chasing them and you running after them is a really, really fun thing. So being able to stop things that I don't want to have happen really, really quickly, and then redirecting the things that I do want makes all the difference in the world when it comes to raising a puppy. So what is this tool that's gonna make the quickest difference in your puppy training? It's this. We call it a house line. Now you might be saying to yourself, that looks just like a leash, and you might be partly right. It is a leash, but it's not my good training leash. It's not the leather one that I use when I'm out actually working with my puppy. It's a cotton line about the length of a leash that allows me to attach something to my dog and have them drag it around. And that literally becomes part of their wardrobe. Every time they come out of their crate, this gets attached to my dog's collar, and it's simply something that follows behind them. And being able to do that allows me to extend my reach. It allows me to use my voice. It allows me to interrupt things from happening before they've happened or even after they've happened without having to chase my pup, without having to make it a big deal, without my puppy learning that it's a game to run and grab things and move away. With it running behind my pup, I can simply use my voice. I can step on it. I can pick it up. I can redirect my puppy from things. If they're jumping up on me, I can use it to direct them off of me. If they're chewing on my pant legs, I can prevent them from doing so and help them make a different choice. This simple leash is what's gonna make the biggest difference in your puppy training. One of the biggest concerns, of course, is this line getting caught on things around the house. So all I'm gonna do to take care of that is grab some scissors, cut this handle off, and it's gonna be much safer for that puppy. So a second ago, I let him out of the crate and he had a little party on his own. So I'm gonna change that picture now. I've got my line here, I've got my handle cut off. I'm gonna open this door, I'm gonna take a hold of his collar, I'm gonna clip on the line, and that's gonna give me the ability to stop the things that I don't want him to do in a nice, calm, clear manner. So I've got the line here. I'm gonna open the crate. Good boy, bud. Before I let him out, I'm gonna reach in and take a hold of his collar. Good boy, that's a good guy. And I'm gonna find that little collar ring, attach my line on, and then when I'm good and ready, I'm gonna release him out. Now, obviously, just clipping a line hasn't changed any of little popcorn's behavior here, but what it's done is it put me in a great position to stop things from happening without making it fun for him. And I don't wanna take away all his fun, but I want to be able to have him learn that my voice has weight and I can simply interrupt things. So for example, let's say he's chewing on the line like he is, I can remove it from his mouth and then I can redirect him to something else. Hey, you leave that, go on. Now he's a little nipping and biting, so I can tell him, hey, that's enough, stop. I can slide my hand down and take a hold of his collar. Hey, 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 settle. Good boy, good, that's better, good. If he were to jump on me, I can simply use my line to tell him off and give a little bump down towards the ground. Or if he happened to be running away, I can simply stop him. I can take a hold of this line and prevent him from going somewhere else, okay? I'm not using it in a corrective manner. I'm simply preventing things that I don't want from happening. Now, there's three things that happened really, really quickly. He wanted to chew on the line. He wanted to bite on my hands, and then he wanted to jump. And these are the three behaviors that can quickly be stopped with this, okay? Hey, hi, buddy. Good, hey, 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 that's enough. Good. So right now he's very excited and he doesn't know what to do with himself. Because I have this line on him, now I can change the picture from don't do this, don't do this, don't do this to here's what to do. So I've limited his ability to go away, but now I'm gonna focus on a little bit of training. So I got some great treats here. I'm gonna keep him somewhat in my arm's reach and I might work on doing a little stationary exercise training. So I might encourage him to come over here and sit. Good boy. I might simply lure him into it. Yes, good boy into a sitting position. Good boy, get that right there. Good job. They're little treats, bud. You can figure those out. Excellent job. Yes. Good. Yes. Now, this line is not to prevent him from going anywhere in these situations. This line is simply to keep his focus a little bit more on me. So again, I can work on a little SIT. Good job. I might see, ooh, that's exciting. So, he decided to jump at me, no big deal. 
I've got the line in my hands. I can simply redirect them from that and bring them right back to the task, which is doing a little bit of work. Hey, 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 you're fine. Go ahead. There's a boy. Off, off, off. Good. Hey, that's enough. Off, off, off. Okay. Stop. Stop. He's getting a little excited, so instead of using the line, I'm going to use that line to guide my hand down to his collar. We're just going to work on a little bit of settling now. Hey, you're fine. Hey, you're fine. Settle. Good. Good boy. That's better. Good. Excellent job. We'll get that right there. Good boy. All right, let's see if we can do a little more stationary work now. Now that I've sort of worked through that little excitement, I'm going to go back to a little more training. Yes, good boy. Good. Yes. Good sit. Good boy. Right here. Good. Good sit. Good. Okay. Good. Excellent job. Now, I've got a toy here somewhere for him. I'm going to use that to occupy him for a second while I talk to you. Okay, get that thing. One of the things that this allows me to do is stop things that I don't want from happening and take away some of the inadvertent reward. Now, in that little session, he was jumping, he was biting, he was doing all sorts of things. I do want to interrupt that, but I'm at the point with this dog, he's a brand new dog, I met him about five minutes ago, that I need to spend some time more so teaching him what to do. Stopping the rehearsal of the bad things and teaching him what to do is my goal. And again, this allows me the ability to extend my arms. One of the things that tends to happen is we tend to with puppies that jump as we push them off and puppies go, oh my gosh, that's what I wanted. I wanted the rough and tumble behavior. I wanted to have that wrestling match with you. Taking a little bit more hands-off approach, redirecting with my line, using his collar to settle if he was a little bit overzealous and then teaching him what to do instead, changes the entire narrative. It takes the frustration out of it. Now, this is the part that always is, that's always the hardest with puppies. In my house, I've had lots of puppies both before and after I had kids when I was in different businesses. And that constant supervision is the hard part, but being able to extend my reach in a manner that helps him make great choices. Whoops. Hi, buddy. Good job. He went over to see what was going on over there. That line was right there. I could quickly redirect him and bring him back. Controls his environment, teaches him here's where he needs to be, and gives me the ability to use my voice first and then simply back it up. So let's talk about how we can use a house line to stop jumping up. Now, one of the hardest things for popcorn right now is I'm sitting down on the ground, I'm down at his level, and he thinks, oh my God, this is the best thing in the world. First things first, I wanna make sure I stand up. Now, this is where the house line becomes a big benefit to me because the moment I stand up, it's pretty hard to reach down and take control of a little puppy's collar. But with that line on, I can take a hold of the line, as I'm standing up, now I have great control of the pup and I can help him make some better choices. Hey, 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 good. Now, in that situation, hey, he decided that my pants were pretty awesome. This house line, if I didn't have it in my hands, would put me in a situation where I'm trying to get to the pup. Now, he's figuring out right now that he can't get to my pant legs. Good boy, that's better, excellent, hey using my voice to interrupt and simply preventing him from continuing to rehearse it. Now, this is hard for him because this is something he's done quite a bit. Hi, bud. How are you? Excellent job. So instead of getting myself in a situation, hey, that's enough, where he's going to do it over and over again, I'm actually going to change the picture. Hey, that's enough. I am taking a very hands-off approach with this. I don't want to go down and tell him not to do it and to make it about petting and rewarding. This line gives me a hands-off approach to clearly and calmly prevent something from happening. Now, he is a puppy, he's an intense puppy, and he's gonna try this over and over and over. He's obviously rehearsed this a little bit in his house, but the more he realizes he can't do something, the less valuable it becomes for, to him. The more I um, encourage him and touch him and good boy, excellent, and do all sorts of other things, the more he continues to try. I'm simply taking away his ability to do it, and I'm not rewarding it, okay? I'm also taking away his self-reward. Okay, good job, excellent boy. Now that he's making better choices, that's a guy, good job, good. And I can just bring him back on over here. Good boy, hey, that's enough. So we went from trying to bite my pants to trying to bite my hand. But again, I've still got great control of him without having to be yelling and screaming and do all kinds of different things. If I didn't have this line on, we'd be having a bit of a tussle right now. So I'm gonna change the picture a little bit. I'm actually gonna do a little bit of training right now. Now he's figured he can't move away. So let's get him up and doing some stuff. So let's get him luring with some food. Okay, buddy, good boy, yes, good. Get that, good, let's turn him this way. Good, yes, good, excellent, good. Yes, good, yeah, bud. Yes, good, sit. Beautiful. Now that I have a little bit more focus, I'm just simply gonna put this line on the ground. Yes, good sit, buddy. Good job, hooray. Yes, good. 
So stopping the thing that I didn't like and then quickly shifting gears into something else that I wanted him to do. Okay. Yes, good boy, hooray. Telling him it's okay to get up. Maybe luring him back this way. Yes, good boy. Working another sit. Yes, good sit. Oh, he's gonna go for my legs again. But he made a great decision there. Excellent job, good. So he thought about going for my pant legs right in that moment. And because we'd just done a little bit of work on it a second ago, he actually changed his mind and he went, hey, I get rewards if I sit. Good job, good boy. That's the kind of thing that preventing the rehearsal of it from happening um, will do. You know, if I had sort of gotten into a bit of a wrestling match where he was chewing on my pants, he got to tug on them and I sort of put my hands all over him, there would still be a little reward in there. I simply prevented it from happening, changed gears, and that allowed him in that moment to make a really great choice, which is don't chew on the pants, but sit nicely, Good job, excellent boy. Yes, good job for those good treats. Excellent job. So in that situation, Popcorn has decided that his toys and the treats on top of the crate are a really exciting thing. So instead of me having to rush over to him and grab onto him, I can simply take a hold of the line and I can encourage him away from those toys or from that particular thing. Now in this case, it's the crate um, with his treats and his toys on it, but it might be the shoes or the coat hanging on the coat rack. Having the ability to redirect him from a distance prevents me to, from having to run to him each and every time. If I had to run to him and grab onto him and then pick him up and then all of a sudden I'd be giving him all sorts of love for doing something that I don't really want him to do. That inadvert reward plays a lot into how puppies learn. Puppies are always learning whether we're teaching them or not. So it's important I give them really clear information. So instead of letting him run over and have a little jump and me giving him a massage, he can go have a little bit of a look, okay? If he sees those things and I can simply prevent him from rehearsing it. Now, as we were talking about that, he decided to go over and look at these tea towels over here. Now, I know this is a big draw for a lot of puppies. I've been able to continue to talk to you and simply by stepping on this line, I limit his ability to rehearse that. I've stopped him from doing something that might in that second become super, super valuable towards him. Good boy, buddy, excellent job. I prevented him from taking a hold of those tea towels. I simply limited him from moving and now he's made another choice, which is just to kind of chill out and to lie down. So this is the perfect thing that I can then start to reward and build a little bit more value for doing some more calm behaviors. Because as we know, puppies don't know how to self-regulate. They're always going taking opportunities to reward calm behaviors and prevent behaviors that we don't want from happening is what makes the biggest difference in the long run. One of the common questions we get is, what do I do when my puppy does this and decides to make that uh, house line a chew toy? Well, like anything else I don't want him to, to uh, chew on, I'm gonna make sure that I'm consistent about letting him know that he should. So first things first, I'm simply gonna remove it from his mouth and then I'm gonna give him another job to do. Now, oftentimes people will take out a toy. Okay, buddy. Come on over here. While the dog is chewing on the line and do a little trade for them. Come on, buddy, off the mat. I need you to do some work. Good boy. What I want to do is I want him to know he shouldn't chew on the on the line itself, but chewing on the line is not going to get him a toy or get him a little, little bit of reward. Remember, dogs learn within one second. So if I remove it from his mouth and then I encourage him to do something else, even get settled for a second or two, then I could replace it with either a toy or a little treat for something else. So he's got a little itch there, your little itchy bud. Yes, good boy. Very good. Consistency is key when it comes to teaching our dogs not to chew on the house line. And people often say, you know what? It's been a busy day. He's out of his crate. It's just a $2 line. I don't really care. I'm gonna let him chew on it. I'll just buy another one tomorrow. Well, I can tell you from experience that doing that will simply um, set you back. It really will. You have to be committed 100% to teaching our dogs not to chew on that line. Excellent, good job. And then what I could do is offer him, now that we've had enough time elapsed, something else that's a little bit more appropriate for him to chew on. Okay, bud, get your bone. Good job, buddy. Yes, good boy. That's what I want. Excellent guy. Good job, get that bone. Now it might seem obvious, but this line is simply a tool. What really makes the biggest difference is your supervision. The tool allows you to have a little longer reach and take away the dog's rehearsal of some of the things that you don't want them to do. It's really important though, if you can't supervise them that closely, you're gonna put your dog in your crate. Using that crate to manage their behaviors when you can't supervise is what makes the biggest difference in the long run. And now that uh, little popcorn here has had quite a little training session and some fun, we're gonna pop him in here and he's gonna have a little nap. In you go, buddy, because I got other stuff to do. So now that you know how this line can make a quick fix in your puppy training, you're gonna need some more ideas on how to train your puppy. And for information on that, click that video right there. Now, if you want some more specific training help for you and your puppy and you want direct interaction with our McCann instructors, Click the link in the description below for our Puppy Essentials program for puppies five months of age and younger. And on that note, I'm Instructor Steve. This is Popcorn. Happy training.